Good to see you back on Mentory TV. Well, 2020 has been a tough year to say the least. The COVID-19 pandemic hit and it doesn't let off. And there is tragedy and heartbreak across the globe. But even in times like this, in times of crisis, there is something positive to be found. There is a light at the end of the tunnel. And due to my YouTube channel, Mentory TV, I was able to reach out to brilliant minds and visionaries and people in general sharing their insights and their thoughts with us here on the platform. So I thought, why not package it together? Call it Review 2020 and offer it to you in this kind of condensed packages. And at this point, let me also say thank you that you've been joining our community, are loyal and keeping curious. So I hope you're going to enjoy this kind of Review 2020. Many of the private equity firms have a considerable portfolio, a considerable cash portfolio. And in this moment, they can look at many opportunities that are out there of companies that are in difficulties, that are either underperforming or that are finding themselves trapped by the throat because of the cash situation. And they can come in with a considerable amount of help, support, and gain positions, equity positions in companies that maybe two months ago were absolutely not available. I'll give you an example that is strictly related to my activity. We have invested, uh, it ended up to be at the end of last year, so it was pre-crisis, but we have invested in an oil company, oil service company, uh, a small one, not a very big one. Um, and in this moment, the opportunities are there to use this acquired oil service company and looking around into the space that they are occupying and see how many other similar companies in the same kind of general activity are there and are going to be in great difficulties. And so this is going to be represent an opportunity because as a private equity firm in this moment, we do have a sufficient buffer, shall we say, so we can go out and make acquisitions. And as a matter of fact, we are looking for making some acquisitions in this space. It's about becoming aware of what's really important, not only for myself, also for us as a culture. Um, and how can we redefine our value system according to the awareness of responsibility. What do we really need and what don't we need? And there have been many things that we didn't need at all and that we spend a lot of time and a lot of money with. And this is not substantial, but it will be about what can be like substantial foundation and quality, not only for now and the future, but also based on what we already know from the past, what, can, what should we develop? What should we further develop? And what can we get rid of for now? Yeah. In order to set up a new structure for society. Let me quickly interrupt the conversation to say thank you that you are here with me on the channel. If you do enjoy what I'm putting out, the in-depth kind of conversations, then why don't you subscribe and also hit the bell button so I can keep you informed with our newest releases. Thanks for that in advance, and let's get back to the conversation. Please lay out a little bit the picture of where the link really is, of what's happening with this current crisis, COVID-19, contraction and death in our immunity system. That's right, and thank you for that, because you know, we've known this for years, that this type of emergency and pandemic could occur, because we're all making ourselves cancer-prone because we're eating ultra processed foods, we're creating food addictions, and the population is becoming overweight all over the world. And we have a um, population of overweight, malnourished people who have excess calories while they're still deficient in micronutrients. And by micronutrients, we're talking about vitamins, minerals, phytochemicals, and antioxidants, particularly the phytochemicals and antioxidants. When we take in empty calories, calories with no micronutrient load, we cause immune suppression and immune system deficiencies, and we inactivate 
the normal defenses of our immune system. So viruses can invade, replicate, change their DNA and become more dangerous, and then evade capture and set up inflammatory, and we call it a cytokine storm, in that viruses can set up an, um, pro, a pro-inflammatory state that causes a lot of mucus and, and interferes with breathing problems. And this is occurring in, in an immunosuppressed population. These problems don't occur in people with excellent immune function. And you can only have excellent immune function if your body is well nourished with this huge spectrum of micronutrients present in the plant kingdom. So what I'm saying here is that green vegetables might be the most protective food for immune function. And using that as an example, without a person who's eating an adequate amount of green vegetables, then we can't expect to have a normal response to a novel virus like Corona, like COVID-19. But during COVID-19, I think what you saw was the value of the technology. So if you look at whether it's in forklift trucks, whether it's for on-road vehicles, there's certainly an element of climate change, uh, but there's also a value proposition like other technologies that are new, that are coming, that makes work easier. So uh, in Walmart distribution centers, we're able to move about eight to nine percent more goods per hour. And during COVID-19, uh, there were times where those facilities were working at 50 percent capacity. So plug power and hydrogen, a little known fact, 30 percent of the food in the U.S. In, during, the, during this crisis have actually touched a device manufactured by plug power, which, had, which, which uh, was powered by hydrogen. Yeah. So, you know, I think what you have is now uh, a lot of people step back, uh, especially our main customers. I can tell you they're thinking about where else can hydrogen be used in their application. 